Hey, what's up, y'all? Back with another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Military Simulator squads, and this is from the same developer that's currently gearing up for the full release of Starship Troopers. I would like to thank the developer Offworld for providing this channel with a key. Now, to explain the title, this is one of the hardest first person shooters I've ever played, and that difficulty stems directly from the game's structure and realism. There is no reticles when you're aiming from the hip, there's no ammo readouts for magazines, no kill confirmation, and no in game visible identifiers for enemies. Now, on top of all this, friendly fire is always on as well, and it only takes one to three bullets to down an enemy or a teammate. So, you literally have to visually study the uniform of every faction in the game now this sounds easier than what it is but when you actually play the game or even just take a look at this board you realize how close a lot of these uh, you know these military factions look the identifiers literally go down to very small details like the color of their boots now all of this is described on the store page as an ultra realistic infantry combat experience in my opinion the best way to describe this entire game is a ultra realistic hardcore battlefield Classes work the same way for the most part, and the overall structure of the game is very similar. The majority of the differences in squad are all centered around realism and tactical team-based gameplay. For example, all the weapons and equipment have a limited amount of ammo, and there is an overall limit for your team's total ammunition. And in addition to this for added realism, the Rifleman's ammo bag has a limit of 100 units of ammunition, and the amount needed to resupply each class varies. You also need to pick the bag back up after dropping it. Another difference between the two games is deployables. Deployables are structures that squad leaders and fire team leads can build like spawn points, ammo crates, repair stations, emplacements, and much, much more. Now I'm speaking from the perspective of an observer because you need about 200 hours to be a squad leader, and I'm nowhere close to that. <laughs> now I just want to give a warning to anybody watching, this game is not like Call of Duty and even though I've been comparing it a lot to Battlefield, when it comes to the gameplay, like the, the raw gameplay, Squad is not like Battlefield. This game is not for lone wolves. Squad's main focus is teamwork, strategy, and coordination with your teammates. And this is not only recommended, but it's completely necessary for victory. Every class has a role to play from healing and reviving fallen squad mates to building fortifications or securing objectives. Every action contributes to your victory. Now, while a lot of Battlefield supporting roles are supplementary, here in Squad, they are crucial in the difference between winning and losing. And I kind of feel like this is a double-edged sword because your experience with this game is entirely dependent on who you're playing with and how fast you learn. Teamwork and communication are required consistently throughout every match, and there is a lot to learn. I've been playing for three weeks, and I still haven't even begun to scratch the surface of everything that's offered here. This is a deep, complex game with a super, super steep learning curve. Hold here. We're, we're on five taps. Friendly's crossing. Friendly's crossing. Hold your fire. Yep. Hey, Roger. Hey, let me see. right here. Overlook the east. Watch the east. Hey, you got an auto rifle. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. Yeah. Are you found the radio yet? Found the ammo box. Negative. Oh, Jesus Christ. People, watch your fire. There's a lot of them alive in that building. We need to deal with those incoming guys. Incoming frag, incoming frag. What we're gonna do, we're gonna kinda secure the uh, south side of the objective over here. Uh, just get set up inside these trees. Watch the east. Have Isolate the objective so that way the uh, assault teams can get in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you can keep that tank busy, keep him busy. Yeah, he's so tunnel vision right now, it's funny. Yeah. Hey, uh, whoever's right next to Doc, get, uh, get him back up. Now, at first, I was jumping between classes, but now that I've settled into Rifleman for about a week, I feel like I'm learning more about the game every single time I play. One of the main things that kind of got me about this game and took a lot of getting used to was aiming from the hip without any type of reticle. On top of that, too, is not having a ammo readout. It's a lot of things that kind of just like mess with your head, if, especially if you've like played a lot of games that have these options. So it's just it takes a lot of getting used to. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest, the most fun I had playing this game was seating on these smaller maps. I feel like some of the uh, large maps, I had fun playing Invasion on some of the large maps, but what generally what happened was there was a lot of downtime to where you just, you know, had to take direction from your squad. And it's like you're not always doing 
with fun or action packs, sometimes you might be helping to build something. You know, sometimes you might be driving a logic truck. You know, you might be transporting ammunition or, you know, other soldiers and teammates. It's not always fun. That's something that I kind of didn't like about these larger games. But I still enjoy my time with this game. And I was impressed with the amount of, uh, you know, factions they had. This game has 13 factions. I don't think I've ever seen a battlefield with that many factions. And, like, each faction, you know, is a different country's military. And they all have different weapons, different uniforms, etc., different vehicles. That's something that I think is really cool. And it kind of adds into, you know, like, uh, the overall realism of the experience. I feel like it kind of makes this slower-paced experience. You know, you have the realistic recoil. You have the weightiness of your, your movement and your aiming. And it kind of just makes this experience to where it's not really about, like, you know, twitch reflexes and speed. And it's more about awareness and, like, a position. That's something that I really like about this game. I'm going to go ahead and finish this video out with some gameplay. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll be back with another video. Thank y'all for watching. Peace. Hey, Boys. Oh, all, all you had to do was say something. All you had to do was say something.